Welcome to the Physics Trek channel, where incremental success is on tap. Sticking with the program, by degrees, you will achieve your goals, and that's a promise. I'm Alan Jay, here with yet another annoying work solution to help you improve your physics. In this video, like in all the other ones before, you'll learn best practice in setting out and solving problems. So the name of the game is for us all to be more Spock-like. In other words, thinking clearly and being logical. You may remember in my preamble last time, I talked a little about g, the acceleration due to gravity, and how it varied over the Earth. Well, I'm, I'll tell you a little secret. g has a dual personality. It is also something else. Besides being the acceleration due to gravity, measured in meters per second per second, it is also, wait for it, called the gravitational field strength with a completely different set of units. G is now 9.81 newtons per kilogram. Now, what does that mean? Well, as the name suggests, G is the strength of the gravitational field. By definition, this is simply the force on a one kilogram mass placed in the field. So on the surface of the Earth, a one kilogram mass is pulled down in a direction towards the center of the Earth by a force of 9.81 newtons. Well, I hope this has whetted your appetite for things to come. The gravitational force on a mass is called the weight, right? And it's measured in newtons, units of force, weight, measured in newtons. That's what I said, newtons. Is that what the scales read the last time you were weighed? There's clearly some confusion here, but do not despair. Help is on the way. Let me assure you there will be lots more on this thorny question in the next topic, weight and mass. And now to our question, question five. This is in three parts. The first two parts are fairly straightforward. A metal ball falls from a cliff and the question asks for the final velocity and the cliff height. The last part is an interesting rider to the question. It concerns the ball penetrating the sand to a given depth and you are required to work out the ball's retardation. Here it is. Question number five. A small iron ball is dropped from the top of a vertical cliff and takes 2.5 seconds to reach the sandy beach below. Find one, the velocity with which it strikes the sand, two, the height of the cliff, and three, if the ball penetrates the sand to a depth of 12.5 centimeters, calculate its average retardation. We really need to draw a diagram first to get a grip on this, just to define all the symbols we're going to use. Okay, so we have our sand at the bottom of the cliff. We have the cliff. This is the top of the cliff. And that's the bottom of the cliff. The height of the cliff is S subscript C. The iron ball falls from the top of the cliff to the bottom. It starts off with initial velocity u1 and final velocity v1. It falls in time t seconds. It falls under gravity g. And in the sand, it falls with initial velocity u2 and final velocity v2. Again, under g, but also with a retardation a in the opposite direction. And the depth of the sand is S subscript D. Now let's just remember the final velocity of the iron ball is the initial velocity of the iron ball as it enters the sand. U2 is equal to V1. So let's give some value to these symbols. U1 is equal to 0 meters per second. It's the initial velocity. V1 final velocity we need to calculate SC the height of the cliff we also need to calculate T is equal to 2.5 seconds G the acceleration due to gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second per second U2 we know is equal to V1 V2, 
the final velocity in the sand is 0 meters per second. SD, the depth of the sand, is equal to 12.5 centimeters, which in meters is equal to 0 0.125. A is the retardation, and we need to work that out. And now to the first part of the question. This is really very straightforward. We have V1 is equal to U1 plus GT. Putting the numbers in, U1, the initial velocity is 0, G is 9.8, and t, the time to fall the vertical distance, is 2.5 seconds. And this comes to 24.5 meters per second. And now to the second part. OK. The height of the cliff, we call it S subscript C, is given by V1 squared minus U1 squared is equal to 2GSC. We need to make SC the subject, so let's just first change the equation around. So we have 2GSC is equal to V1 squared minus U1 squared. We need SC to be the subject, so we divide both sides by 2G, cancels out on the left, and we're left with it underneath. So SC is equal to V1 squared minus U1 squared divided by 2G. So let's put the numbers in. That equals 24.5 squared minus 0 squared divided by 2 times the value of g, which is 9.8. And this comes to 30.625 meters. Now, I think we need to draw a little diagram for the final part, part three, just so we know exactly what we're doing. OK, this is the part in the sand. OK, we have our iron ball, comes down through the sand, and it stops at the end of the depth of sand. It falls under the value of g, under g, but there is a retardation A in the opposite direction. So the net acceleration is G minus A because positive is down. So let's write the equation now. We have V2 squared minus U2 squared is equal to 2 bracket G minus A bracket times s d. Now we need to make a the subject, so the next thing to do is to expand the brackets. So we have v2 squared minus u2 squared is equal to 2g s d minus 2a s d. Need to make a the subject. We take the minus 2a s d to the left and the v2 squared minus u2 squared to the right, so we get 2a s d is equal to 2g sd minus v2 squared plus u2 squared. Now we need to put a on its own, so we divide both sides by 2sd, which gives us a is equal to 2g sd minus v2 squared plus u2 squared divided by 2sd, which equals, if we put the numbers in, 2 times 9.8 times 0 0.125 minus 0 squared plus 24.5 squared divided by 2 times 0 0.125 which comes to 2410.80 meters per second per second. Okay, now we come to our answer summary. 
Part 1. The impact velocity of the iron ball with the sand is 24.50 meters per second. Part 2. The height of the cliff is 30.63 meters. And part 3. The retardation of the iron ball is 2410.80 meters per second per second. All this to two decimal places. Well, all good things come to an end. I can't but hope that I've shone a little light on the proceedings and helped you in some way. But most importantly, if you enjoyed the video, please do show your appreciation by giving the channel a like, a favorite, or a subscribe. Remember, most of the unanswered intermediate mechanics questions are on the Physics Trek website now. So go on, have a go at them, and stay ahead of the game. Anyway, do look out for the next work solution on the topic Accelerated Motion Under Gravity, number six. It's already cooking, and will be with you very soon. And if you want to recap on the previous video, just click the link. Remember, Comments on the show, suggestions on how to make it better, or ideas for new videos are always welcome. Thank you all for watching.